Hello. Everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, good Sasha. afternoon, good morning, or good evening, wherever you are. So we're all ready to watch you. So can you I'm, hear us well, Nick? Yeah, we can hear you. I'm going to put my video off and my mute so we don't disturb you, but we're all here watching you, okay? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Sasha. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, Mirko. Thank you. Well, first of all, to start, hello to everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, or good morning, wherever you are. And uh, to begin, both Arena and I would like to thank the WDC and the WDCAL to give us, giving us this opportunity to do this uh, Zoominar. We are very excited and we've been looking forward to it. And honored. Yes, very much honored. Um, and we hope you enjoy it. So our topic today is the importance of good technique. And we think that to start talking about the subject, we must first define what is technique. Technique is a way of carrying out a particular task, especially execution or performance of an artistic work. Now, dancing is an artistic work, so the definition fits the word. Now, there are also slightly other variances of definition of the word technique. Technique is also a skill or ability in a particular field. And it is also defined as a skillful or efficient way of doing or achieving something. Now, we find that very interesting because we think that good technique in dancing is very much closely related to efficiency, efficiency of movement. And you also heard the word skill in one of these definitions. So let's also look into what is skill. What does it mean to be efficient? A skill is an ability to do something well. Not just an ability to do something, but an ability to do something well. And to be efficient is to achieve something with maximum productivity, but with minimum wasted effort or expense. So whatever it is that you do, let's say here in dancing, it has to take the effort only to produce the result that you need and not waste any energy or effort. And before we get into the moving and the technique of our Latin American dancing, we also wanted to broaden the spectrum of what is good technique. What about the other aspects of dancing? How do you approach your practice? What is your technique to do your practice? How do you show up to practice? How do you start the practice? How do you dance together? What about your technique of having lessons? How do you approach your dance lesson with a the teacher? There is technique to that as well. And yeah. Warming up is a good technique. That's always a great thing. What about participating in competitions? We are competitive Latin American dancers and it is very important for us to have good technique in approaching a competition that we would like to be winners of. And that leads us to a subject that we wanted to touch upon that today in our lecture, when we speak about good technique and the importance of it, it is all in the light of the discipline of Latin American dancing and the competition. It is competitive Latin American dancing that we participate in. And at times we forget that when we put the number on and we go into a competition, our goal, whether we like to accept it or not, is to win it. Now, are we artists? Yes, you may say so. Are we, do we have athletic abilities? Yes, we must. However, while we take part in competitions, we must use good technique to sort out the way to win the competition while being artistic, athletic, poetic, or pathetic. The choice how we decide to do it is ours, yet the task at hand is to come first. And that thinking is a technique in itself. And we think sometimes most people in our dancing who claim themselves as only artists, they would like to escape the comparison. And comparison is the essence of the competition. So please keep in mind that you use your good technique to be a winner of whatever event you take part of. And actually the only reason that we have to practice the good technique is for our bodies not to stand on the way of the, our soul expressing itself. So technique is a tool to achieve the way of movement that you want. It's not the main um, ingredient. There is so, 
so many to the dancing. Um, and I would like to say as well that technique in our discipline that actually um, it dif differentiates our style of dancing from others because uh, it's particular for our style, right? So Walter layered throat technique and it's our technique. It's tempo, beat value, footwork, body turn, hand hold, all of those aspects, etc. we have to be aware about. Um, right now, I would like to actually make a reference to uh, ballet. Um, I've been researching and I found out that ballet has six main major uh, methods or techniques or schools, you can also call it like that. Um, and I would like uh, not to speak about all of them, but actually touch upon um, only four. And um, all the techniques, there is none uh, the best or worst. They're all equally good and they're all equally recognized and appreciated which is great i feel absolutely um so i would like to say a couple of words about the cicchetti method uh it's a uh, italian school and it's very very strict regimen of exercises and it's emph uh, emphasis goes on to anatomy of the body uh dancer has to be very fit and strong and the line of the body goes the energy goes from the bottom uh, from the bottom bottom um here to the top through the head and almost infinite uh then also the main thing in that method is a quality over quantity um so it's not how many of the steps you did it's how well you you do them um also in that particular style uh dancer encouraged encouraged to uh, develop his own um, way of movement and not to mimic the teacher which i think is important very important um, nowadays because um especially little kids um um i think we used to teach just by showing and not actually switching on the brain and for them to uh, get into the answering the questions themselves. Um, okay, so moving on to the next uh, method, it's uh, born on the method. It begins in the soft arms and soft shapes, and actually, it uh, it has to come with the harmony with the strict and very precise foot and leg timing. Um, it also has a specific lifted torso position and a framework, which is very uh, definite, define that style particularly. Um, at the same time, it is refined uh, with detail and it's actually more romantic. Um, and it, uh, most of the times it touches the heart. So this is also particular for that style. Um, in this particular method, a uh, male dancer or male character emphasized much more than female, uh, rather than in all other schools. Um, so next one would be the French method. And this one is most fluid um, way of uh, performing, when of, way of dancing ballet. It's also actually the most recent because it, um, therefore it doesn't have syllabus literature on syllables and therefore it's only kept in the um, Paris Opera School. Um, also uh, this French method is referred to as New Ray of School because it is based on his style and the steps that he excelled uh, in. And it's also very interesting because sometimes we take um, steps and styles of a previous champions um, maybe not realizing the full technique that was uh, went into Absolutely. that, uh, but still taking them. Yeah. So, and interesting that in ballet they have a certain method that they teach uh, by one person. <clears throat> uh, in all, in this method as well, the music is insisted to play slower 
for dancers. Um, the last one is a balance chin method. And this is most studied in US. And it's more modern, more jazz. Uh, Balanchine um, was a fan of um, Fred Astaire. And uh, dancers have to show extreme speed. They have to um, present unconventional, uh, unconventional arms and hands. Um, also, a very interesting point that uh, he enjoyed watching dancers break the laws of motion which sometimes um, also, I think, even myself, I some, some, sometimes struggle to get out of my safe zone when I dance. I'd rather be on my foot even when I'm connected to my partner, but sometimes we actually have to go maybe past and away and off balance. So I think a lot of people also enjoy watching that. Um, also, uh, the music insisted not to slow down for the dancers. As many movements and steps to be packed in a small block of music uh, is also very particular for that style. And um, also for me, I found very interesting point that in this style, uh, Balanchine loved um, elongation of limbs um the look of it so let's say if in a ballet when you do our arabesque i'm just going to stand here and thank you man yeah. so in uh, in ballet in arabesque an arabesque you cannot open the hip this way it, it has to stay closed and the leg has to come up but balancing to elongate the leg and the look of it he would open the hip to the audience or opposite to the upstage. And that would create a longer um, look of the leg. And actually in Latin, I would like to also make parallel. Um, let's say a forward walk turn um, through my um, well, career. Yeah, relatively still short, but still quite long already um i've been taught few forward walk turnings and sometimes i've been um so you have to choose right maybe you can use one or the other so let's say one is a particular uh are we doing can i just show it yeah yeah so one forward walk turning is actually goes down and it's I feel it's more Cuban more grounded when the hip actually comes forward into the pendulum and I can actually show it off yeah that's one way and another way uh, also I've been taught or we've been taught that uh, will create an elongation of uh, the leg of the hip create a longer look so that has to do with the hip uh, uh, the hip of the back leg being lifted as I come on to the foot, and then lowered only by the end of the turn. Uh, and if we, let's say, do the, we wanted to do a spiral, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say we do a back basic and a spiral. And right here, of course, it depends on the lead, right? Uh, if Sasha now gets me uh, further into my leg, I, this will indicate for me that my hip will be more Cuban and more grounded. And I will turn on a low hip. So, and the other one? And right here he will retract the arm and that will lift my hip and create the longer look of the leg even for that whole beat or half a beat yeah um so i find this very interesting that um they are both equally good 
it just depends um, which one you like, right? Absolutely. Yes. And um, as we already said, as Arena said, that our main uh, message to send through what is the importance of good technique is to say that it has to be a tool for you and for your body not to stand in the way of the expression of your soul or your spirit or whatever it is and however it is you desire to move. So in this also example that Arena just showed with the forward walk, she would like to maybe sometimes express and connect to someone in front of her and show off that hip in the grounded motion. Or she would like to maybe tease me and have a lifted hip towards me. Because remember, the expression is also not only of the music, which is very important, but it, it is the expression between the two of us and how do we communicate as we are dancing. And so also, we wanted to talk a little bit of that expression in a simple back basic. So if we start here and we learn always, of course, that we have to take care of ourselves, we have to involve our center. Walter Laird wrote in the technique book, lift the rib cage. Now we have a long spine, we are over the foot, now we connect to each other. We connect by connecting our spines together. Now, important to remember that we don't connect the spines by hinging the hips. So the spine all the way to the base through the sacrum into the tailbone. So that will involve a thigh connection. So now as we are doing that, the thigh connection is not about actually shoving the thighs at each other, but dancing your action and sensing each other in that action. It is not only Arena blindly listening to my action, but I am also sensing what she is doing as I am dancing my steps. And we can do our forward walk check and replace and a hip twist here into the fan and off we go. Now, how can we then connect the point of expression to something so simple. If whatever it is the music or a feeling that I have that inspires me, instead of moving together as one at the same distance, to actually bring myself closer to Arena, I can't just do it by taking a step because now she doesn't know. That doesn't, that's no good. I have to use the same technique, a good technique of my spine, my center, my connection timing of the spines together. But as I set off on that journey, I want to smell the perfume and then send her off and listen to what she wants to do here. Let's try that again. I think we're a bit out of the screen. I was out, you were yeah. in. Yeah, well, it's about <laughs> you. And two, three. Ah, three. Breaking yes. the laws of motion. Yes. So we now start to push the boundaries. Now, it is only possible if we took care of our bodies and we took care of our common language of the good technique. How do we move together? Then we can start to create a conversation. Now, when we come to the hip twist, <clears throat> we have three different leads in the technique book. We have the shaping, the physical, and the allowing. So as Arena, from that back basic, comes forward to me, now I could use a shaping lead and dance and shape my body to guide Arena into the fan, which by the way, I am behind Arena in. I am not on the same track right now and definitely not in front. That would be bad technique. So once again, as Arena comes in and challenges me here with the expression of her closeness, I use a shaping lead. Now you see the shoulders go up a bit and that could be because of the expression of that emotion. Should they technically stay down? Of course. But sometimes you can allow yes. yourself. Not all the time, of course. Yes, but, but an emotional expression at that point for a second can be allowed and not only will it look great, but it will give value to the following steps where the shoulders once again will be down and the body will be aligned. 
Now, if I use a physical lead in this hip twist, I would like to stress that a physical lead doesn't mean that I physically move my hand to lead arena into the hip twist. Physical lead is the relation of my body action through the touch into arena's body. Whereas shaping was me directing, a shaping lead was me directing through my shape. Here, it could get slightly more crisp and bitey, but still through my action. So the physicality, the abuse is not to my partner. The physicality and abuse of the action is not on the arm. It is to myself while having the connected touch. So it happens within the palm of the hand, not within the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. And the last one, which is mostly not used, I think, in the hip twist here, the allowing lead is allowing the lady to complete the weight transfer and then to decide her own timing in that hip twist. And in that one, the most important thing is not to turn off for both of us. Because after that, allowing lead, an activity must come in once again. And that activity will lead through the action, the spine, the legs, into the fan. Because an allowing lead sometimes can lead to sleep, meaning put us to sleep and not have us active. Yeah? So should we move on to the next part? Yeah. The next part that we wanted to talk about is limitation and freedom in good technique. So we know that the technique is used to express yourself, your spirit, your soul, the music, your love, whatever it is. Now, Martha Graham said that freedom to a dancer is discipline. That is what technique is for. Again, freedom to a dancer is discipline. That is what technique is for. Now, what is discipline? To be disciplined is to stick to what you desire to do even when you do not feel like it. And in discipline, those are the rules, we would say. So you have to be committed to something, to the technique, the good technique. Now, to keep the shoulders down, you have to be disciplined. To take a heel lead and not a ball flat, you have to be aware of what you're doing. Awareness and discipline, are related to a certain limitation. So what happens then is you limit yourself from taking a heel lead in the rumba because you have to take a ball flat. You limit yourself from moving the arm around because you would like your lady to look fantastic. Now, what we have to remember is that through learning the good technique, we are educating our bodies. So that, we can move in the way that we desire. So the other point about it is that when we do dance, whether it's the competitions or shows, and today, like we said, it is about the competitions, we still, while winning, must remember that our goal as dancers on the floor is not to educate the audience or the judges. It is to entertain the audience and the judges. Now, entertainment has a broad spectrum of different things. Entertainment is not just sitting into a cake and everybody laughing about it. If you take a parallel to cinema, to the movies, you have drama, you have romance. Those are all forms of entertainment. You have comedy, you have thriller. So if somebody is scared, if somebody is crying, somebody is moved, that is entertainment. If somebody is drawn into you, that is entertainment. So you mustn't educate when you're dancing a competition with your good technique, how your foot is turned out, how your foot is maybe amount of turn is three eighths. No, that is for you to practice in the studio. So by the time you get to the competition, you can be free and entertained. So here is the parallel that we must learn to limit ourselves in certain things so that we can be free later on and that we must educate ourselves in order to entertain the others. Yeah, so in this, I think it's an important subject that we really always think that is um, overlooked because a lot of times we just want to be free and moving around and all over the place, but then the bodies are not educated enough to sustain 
the six, seven rounds at Blackpool. So then the entertainment can last for about a minute and a half and then it's over. So this is the parallel that we wanted to talk a little bit about, about freedom versus limitation and how does good technique help you with that? Yeah. Next one. Yeah. All right. So um, another quote by Martha Graham. Great dancers are great because of their passion, not because of their technique. This is, I think we've heard a lot, a lot from our teachers, this quote. Um, it's a great quote. And I think sometimes it may be misunderstood or, or over, also overlooked by some people. I, we think, and it is only our opinion, we don't really know, never spoke to Martha. But we think when Martha said that she meant that just good technique is not enough. The dancer has to be passionate about what they do. But sometimes I feel like dancers think with that quote that passion is the only thing they must have. So when we are dancing, and let's say we are dancing a um, cha-cha-cha, we have a continuous lock step. So we have, let's start from the lock, four and one and two and three and four, one, two, three. Just a simple thing like that. If I don't have the technique and I don't know about my feet, how my body is, but I am passionate, yes? And I go and one and two, three and cha cha, one and two, three. Doesn't look very good, but I'm passionate. So I have to have the technique, but having the passion with it and on top of it makes me a great dancer or maybe even a greater dancer, a fantastic dancer. Because also it is that passion that will lead me to dig deeper into techniques so I can go further in freedom and expression. And I think a lot of times passion is connected in our dancing. When you say the word passion, you give a little bit of a rumba or a paso. But what about the cha-cha-cha? What about being passionate about what you want to express in the cha-cha? In this continuous lock, let's say we go like an our choreography in one. Arena draws me in into that one and invites me as we go to, I bring her to me because I want that hip. Three and cha cha one. Now she goes, I bring her back. Did you see how cool that was? Now I check out her bum, bring her here and let her lose the headphone. <laughs> so it isn't always about being only passionate in the rumba and maybe taking 17 bars in one step. It is not only about stomping the floor in the Paso Doble. Be passionate in the samba. Find the passion. What is it? Be passionate in the cha-cha-cha and the jack. Also, try not to be um, dry. So if we take the same sequence and we do it with stripping off the passion and the layers of expression, it's going to be very dry, but we're just leaving the technique. Yeah, so there is no bum, no grinning, no inviting. One, two, three, and cha, cha. One, two, three. Very proper and very probably looking not bad, but boring. Yes. Yeah? Yes, and this is where we find a lot of times things happen where the technique and the book is studied and then it's left at that. But the technique is not the end all. Yeah, it is a tool. Once again, we repeat our words. Should we try this to the music? Yeah. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, that wasn't planned. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't planned. <laughs> well, pandemic, everybody is not quite there. Well, this is what happens when technique is there to support you in the moments of improvisation or musicality. So I felt, uh, even though maybe it didn't look as um, as well as we wanted it to. Yes, right? but uh, it felt that in tune. It yes, felt in tune with each other and it felt in tune with the music. Now, Partnered. Yes, we didn't plan it. Maybe it was a little rough and physical, but it was in the moment and aware, and to the best ability, the technique we used to express how we felt, how I felt at that moment, how I really felt at that moment. Now. Practicing good technique is an endless journey. It is a journey of a lifetime that I think lasts through the career and past the career. So we're all on that journey. So <clears throat> the next subject within the importance of good technique is growth versus feeling comfortable. How does that relate to the good technique? Now, just Alan said, when the correct technique feels wrong, challenging, and confusing, there's change and growth. Now, a lot of times we go to the studio and including ourselves and we practice the same way we practiced yesterday. And then that lasts on maybe for a few weeks or so. And then there's a comp prior COVID and then things don't change. Results don't change. So think what's wrong. And then <clears throat> it is important to remember that in practice, is where the growth happens. Of course, sometimes we can push ourselves at the comp, but we must remember to not stay comfortable at practice. So if you are comfortable in the way that you're moving, that means you need to take the next step and push yourself further to develop. So Jeff said that when the correct technique feels wrong, challenging, and confusing. Correct technique feels wrong, challenging, and confusing. Not just technique feels wrong because somebody can teach you some technique and it will feel wrong and challenging and confusing. And a lot of people do, and then it doesn't really do anything to you. Michael Jordan also said that you can shoot hoops for eight hours a day, but if your technique is wrong, then all you become is good at shooting eight hours a day wrong. Shooting it wrong. Yeah, you have to get, he said, the fundamentals right, and then the level of everything you do will rise. So a lot of times we want to feel comfortable at the practice and then we go to the comp and we feel not so good because the body doesn't respond to what we want to do and then the results are not as good as we want them to be. So we think that samba is one of the dances where we personally find a lot of times that we have to push ourselves past the point of the comfort zone because there's a lot of rhythms, different rhythms. There's a lot of body action, body rhythm, body softness. Specific leg action. Specific yes. leg action. Yes, that is related like a whole thing to the torso, to the legs, to the ankles, into the pelvic floor, all of those things together with spine. And interestingly enough, in the samba today, we find that a lot of people look uncomfortable. Yeah, so a lot of people try to create a very stiff and held body. So we have a piece of choreography in this where we go into a run here, to which in a reverse roll action, changing the direction, natural roll, and into. Stationary as always. Slight lead. Some cross section here. Into a pause. So, a lot of times in places like this today, we see that people become comfortable 
in an uncomfortable head posture, held posture, where only the legs and the hips are moving, and there's a lot of body, and the body just stays in one position, and then goes to the next. And the girls are hinged at the hips. Yeah. In samba, where you have to have a pelvic rhythm almost all the time instead of just having this all the time. Pelvis has to speak. It is where we see and that is where we should speak. That is what defines a lot of times the action, the difference between the action and the different dancing. So <clears throat> let's try to music to do maybe a little bit better. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're gonna the microphone. Shoelaces. Thank you. That was one version of how you could do this. Slightly softer, slightly more rhythmical. We hope. <laughs> we hope yeah. It's like zero degrees in this ballroom. <laughs> yeah. Very softer. Um, and I think to apply also some correct technique with that, remember. There must be a sense of space because if you start to have body music, a lot of times droopy elbows come in. Look like that myself a lot of times, and when that happens, then we might not achieve what we wanted in the competition because here we are less competitive than there. Yeah. So that leads us to our next part. And uh, can, I just, the inspiration. can I just interrupt you for a second? I think you, when you were dancing, your microphone moved and it's very, we can hear you very, very far away only. Can you check? Oh. Hello? 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 Yeah, that's better. Okay. Say something. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yes, we, we can hear you now. Yes, okay. Great, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to also say two words about uh, Paso Doble. Um, a lot of dancers, huh? oh, a lot of dancers think that Paso Doble is all about anger, crooked posture, and hips forward. But it's not at all like that. Uh, Paso Doble has a lot of things, and it's a different spectrum um, of uh, moods, of uh, body structures, uh, partnering. Uh, so if, let's say, I want, if we're doing a promenade, if you're doing walks in promenade in Paso Doble March, uh, instead of just, um, going in and hinging and getting my hips forward and calling it, calling it a paso, I actually need to stand up and keep my ribs calm, keep my back long. But of course, when I move in paso, I need to move from underneath because this is um, part of the character, yeah, that we also have to um, know the character is a part of technique and Pasadoba is a strong character. Um, so let's say 
when we walk again. I build my body structure and I fill in my partner's arm and we have a volume here. So as he starts walking, I sense where his body weight is. Now he just switched the weight from both feet to only the right foot. And I sense that and I'm going to do, do the same. Now he's rolling his weight on his foot and his posture is still how we had it in the beginning, right? And walk, walk, walk. And he should be slightly ahead of me. Uh, so for example, if I'm doing something solo, um, uh, I'm a type of dancer that, I don't know, maybe because I'm Russian, but I like to um, hit things like, uh, hua, hua, hua. Like, but sometimes I feel, for example, I'm missing the softer spectrum of paso and maybe more overlapping. And that is also a technique because, um, can you come close? Cause I have, I think you have the microphone. Uh, when I took, uh, I used to take uh, some flamenco classes a few years ago. And that taught me a lot about character of flamenco. And then later I applied it. I tried to apply it in Paso Doble. Um, and how they go on stage, how they take a certain posture, how the arm should be straight, not here, for example, because the look is not gonna be the same on the stage, but here, the resistance and the elongation from the arm and the head up and the spine creates the resistance. And that it's a technique on itself, just in that um, po uh, posture, yeah, or position. Uh, then there is a lot of technique to how you move the wrist and the hands in flamenco. So that also can be implied in, uh, applied in Paso Doble. Uh, we, uh, Sasha also took those classes and uh, we actually built some steps later on out of um, just experiment, uh, experience that we got at Flamenco. Um, uh, our teacher, he is quite old uh, in his 70s, I believe, right? Closer, to, closer to 80. Um, the mom, so he comes into the studio, let's say, right? And he walks, um, he barely walks, but cane, with, yeah, he walks with a cane, actually, yeah. I forgot. And he makes that flamenco rhythm after the cane. Yes, yes, when the group yeah. dances. Uh, and so, but when he stands up in front of the whole group in the middle, facing the mirror, and he stands up here and then everybody just follow him and his arms and his lines and his posture is immaculate at that age. So he practiced his technique. He lived uh, in a flamenco lifestyle, right? And he practiced the character or you can say it was already in him, right? Because he's done it for such a long time. Uh, he practiced the character. So the character merged with the technique and then you get that um, yeah, uh, old man, yes. but immaculate dancer. Incredible. I've, uh, whenever I come to class, I always close the class off by doing a one song where he stands and he does arm work. Yeah. And it is so soft and subtle yet so strong and silhouettes <coughs> and picture and he does very very sudden changes uh however it is impossible to keep up with him the way he lives with the music and the way he does even just the way he brushes his torso before yes. he does something there sometimes maybe a little shoulder it's just it you really see a lifetime work of practice and practicing the good technique. So I, I encourage um, 
the dancers, whoever is watching or will be watching and recording, I don't know, to um, take a look at your puzzle and experiment and maybe research into a flamenco and take inspiration from there and look at the certain um, lines and uh, maybe you will find some interesting footwork that you can practice and that you will practice your technique within that um so yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely taking other styles i think a lot of times keeps us inspired and inspiration is very important because rudolf Nuria, the great ballet dancer said that technique is what we fall back on when we run out of inspiration so a lot of times we can find ourselves running out of inspiration and dancers primarily have to live in the zone of being inspired and motivated to come in to a studio and to do their work and a lot of times i think we especially all, nowadays. yes especially nowadays in the times of the covid where <clears throat> there are no physical competitions um or very little of them and of course there are great um alternative and initiatives that are happening online. Um, and when we run out of inspiration, we must remember that it is not over. It is the technique that we will practice then that will give us something to fall back on when we go into a competition. And that's when it matters that let's say you wake up on a uh, Friday morning or a Wednesday morning, and it's whether it's um, the British Open or the World's, or you're in the Dutch Open or you're in the International, and you don't feel for it. It happens. Sometimes you have a comp and you don't feel for it. But if you've practiced and you've put in the hours into the technique, it will have your back. You will be able to sustain whatever level you need, and you will carry on very well. And it is important to stress that subject. It is your insurance on a bad day. Um, God forbid it happens, but sometimes it might. Absolutely. Yeah? So remember, keep looking and searching for inspiration. Find what ignites your fire, whether it may be flamenco, or you may go into a jazz class or a ballet class, or a, um, maybe some African motion class, maybe belly dancing, whatever it is you would like to do. Maybe just sometimes taking a walk in the park going for a night in the movies, whatever it is that inspires you will keep that fuel going. Because sometimes, especially now, like Irina said, in this time, a lot of dancers, especially the younger dancers, I think find it difficult to understand why should they keep going to the studio and doing that two, two three, four, and one. I think all them too. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, everyone probably. <laughs> but find what inspires you and then you will forget. You'll forget about the troubles, You'll escape from the not so nice reality that we have currently and you get into the zone. Because remember, when you're inspired and you come into the studio, you, what do you do? You probably just go and you dance. You don't want to talk about what's the amount of turn in the fan. You're not talking, you're not discussing, you're not arguing. You're inspired, you go. You go and you dance and you dance and you dance. And those days, those moments are vital. Not just to discuss the theory, which is important, but also to just go and get on with it. Dance, 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 dance. Because if you're a dancer, dance. Actually, sometimes days like that, I feel for us, um, they could lead to um, some new steps, some cool figures. Absolutely. Yeah? Because um, as we said before, Sasha, when you have Sasha, certain base and a ground. Yeah. Maybe it's best if you remove the. Can you talk without the microphone? Can you, because it comes and go and it stops all the time. If you come closer a little bit, please. Sorry. Sasha, try and talk without the the earphones. How is this? Let's see. One moment. How is this? Anybody there? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Is it better? 
Is it any better? Can you hear us? I can hear you clearly, yes. Arena, you try and speak, okay. please. Okay. Um... No, the call is comes and go. It's disturbed. Nicole, how is your uh, okay. sound? Actually, I can hear you good now without the microphone, so... We try now from the computer. Is this any better? Yeah, this is yeah. perfect. Yes. Yeah, very good. Better. Okay, great. How many have you got your phone also connected to Zoom? No. No. Okay. This is a laptop and a camera. Do you want us to connect the phone? No, no, no. no. Because okay. that might disturb uh, actually if the phone is on. Yeah, maybe can you can you move your phone or switch off your phone or something? The phones are because off. Because we cannot hear you and now you got frozen. <clears throat> It could be the Wi-Fi. Yeah, it could be just the Wi-Fi. Yeah, could be. Could be. Um, now it's okay. And now we say something, Arena. Something about the good days Sorry. when you. Can you hear? Me? Hello. Yes. Okay. The picture is Better frozen. Or no? The picture is frozen, though. But that might just be you, Mirko, because I have the picture not frozen. Okay, maybe it's me, no problem. I, okay. Yeah, right. most, I think I have some feedback for the other people, it's okay. Okay, so. you please continue then, okay. I think it might have been a few, okay. Um, anyway, so we, yeah. I was saying that those days have to happen because um, sometimes we found some um, cool um, steps, new steps or figures that we, when we were dancing together and with a base and the ground of a certain level of uh, skill and technique and partnering, we were able to uh, came up with those steps. Come up with those steps, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> and um, I think uh, we're coming to rounding up uh, the lecture about the importance of good technique. And um, the last thing uh, we'd like to talk about is how good technique, if through expression, how it connects you to the music. And Alan Cross, Arlene Cross said that it is through strength of technique that the body stays in possession of music. So it is through the strength of technique that the body stays in possession of music. So if you practice your technique, you will be able to express and get in tune with whatever is being played. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that you always have to stay one-to-one -one with the music, you can practice your music. Let's say in a combo, sometimes you go and you don't like the song, but hopefully you've played good music in practice so that that great music possessed the body that has been practicing good technique and the motion that that music has produced within your body, your body music, has then been practiced so many times that if you go to the comp and the music is not good, it is still there. So it's important to practice to good music because good technique is very closely, of course, also related to practicing to good music. Yeah? Walter Laird said that you have to practice to good music because great dancers, great dancers, when they hear bad music, he said, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it has bad effect on them. Bad dancers has no effect on them. But if great dancers hear extra beats in the music, they can pick up on that and they can create some extra body rhythms, maybe foot rhythms. It's the percussions and uh, the live orchestra, live, um, even recordings of a live orchestra already can give you chills rather than the techno stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. So with that in mind, we just want you to remember that you have to be always practicing the good technique to use it, to use it to express whatever it is you want. And today, <clears throat> a lot of times when we watch other dancers, we find that they connect to maybe a physicality of the muscular motion, a superficial motion, whether it's the teacher or whether they just copy something that they've seen on YouTube and they go for that muscle power, and it is important, we have to be athletic. I mean, nowadays, if you don't go to the gym, you're not gonna be 
be very good. Or if you don't spend enough time sculpting your body through practicing, you're not going to be very good. Physically, you have to be fit. However, <clears throat> you see a clear difference between the dancers who start out dancing and are motivated by the internal driving desire. What it is that makes them dance. Because at some point, they've decided that they want to do this and they love it. And there's, everybody has their own reason why they love it. And the good technique is gonna assist you to be a better dancer, to carry your unique message, why you love this dancing, why you love Latin American dancing, to us, to the audience, to the judges, to the world. And then it will be much stronger than any physical motion that could be maybe reproduced on a treadmill as well. Yeah, so you must remember that the inner reason and the inner drive and the inner purpose the spirit, the soul, is always going to be stronger because it comes from you. It is your own. You are driving that, projecting that, creating it bigger than life itself. Yeah? So remember, don't just do the amount of turn in the book. That's not enough. But don't run and pump the muscles either. You have to do it all. You have to be fit. You have to know the technique. And you have to drive from within. Yeah? Anything else? I think we've covered what we wanted. Absolutely. And once again, thank you so much for having us. It was an honor to thank do this seminar. Thank you, Nicole. Thank, thank you, WGC. Thank you so much.